So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. We're inside the kiln this morning doing a little work. I'm getting ready to load up with some more slabs and start drying some wood today. But before we do that, let me show you guys an upgrade that I just did to the kiln. I think it's gonna make it better for drying lumber. So one thing I wanted to add to this kiln was a way to monitor the moisture of the slabs or the lumber while it's drying without having to come inside the kiln and do it manually. And Delmhurst has a system that I bought late last year. I'm just now getting around to installing it that will make that a lot easier. And it's called the Kiel, K-I-L-M-O. I can't even pronounce it, guys. I'm not even gonna try to say it. But if you got a kiln out there and you're interested in this system and you already have a Delmhurst meter, which is about the same price as this system, there's a link down below to Delmhurst website. Go check it out. I bought mine last year. I think it runs about $700 for the whole kit. If you don't have the Delmhurst meter, that's another $500. But it's a good investment because if you have a kiln and you're drying your own lumber, you want to know what that moisture content is before you cut the kiln off. And as you can see, there's about, I don't know, maybe 200 board feet of eight quarter walnut in here ready to dry. We'll be putting a lot more slabs in here after lunch. But here's the system and how it works. It's over here on this wall right there. You got the wires coming through four different sets so you can run this to four different sample boards to check your moisture. You can do up to six, I believe, with this system. I got four, we'll see if we wanna add more later on. So right here is the yellow, that right there is gonna measure the shell, which is pretty much about the first eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch of the board as far as the moisture goes. Then you have the black and the blue right here and that right there measures the core moisture. And there's different pins. You can go down from an inch and three quarters all the way to maybe a half inch. It just depends on the thickness of your slab and how thick you want to set your moisture reading probes in that lumber. Right here is something you need to do as you're loading your kiln. You're looking at the three leads right there. And those three wires we just looked at hook into these leads. The middle one is the shell, which is the yellow. Then you have the black and the blue, which are the core moistures right there. This one right here is about an inch and a three quarter. This one's about a one inch. And this one right here is, I think, maybe a quarter of an inch, if that. And right here is the monitoring station. And there's no power running to this. You do have to ground it, but there's no power. And it has your six buttons right here. And I'm sorry about the lighting, but the sun's right here in my face. So you come out here, if you want to check number one, there's number one shell and number one core. So if you got walnut in there, which we do, if I want to check the core on the walnut, I go to that setting right there. I plug in my Delmhurst meter. It's already on walnut, which is 47. Then I hit my species button, which right now it's not going to read anything accurate because it's not hooked up. And that's how you get your readings. You also have to set your temperature on your meter as well to the temperature inside the kiln. That's very important. So if you order this system from Delmhurst, you will get this right here. You'll get all the leads, all the connectors, but you will have to buy some kind of box. I got this on Amazon to mount it to, and I ran inch and a half or inch and a quarter flex conduit from the box inside the kiln, and I had to go back and insulate that hole with silicone. That way there's no air gaps and nothing escaping from the kiln. I did a few tests on the moisture meter using these probes and everything looks okay. I think it's running properly. So I think we're good to go ahead and load up this kiln and get it fired up today. We've got a lot of stuff here to dry. So let's go get the tractor and start bringing down some more slabs. And after lunch, we're going to head up to the sawmill and saw up some sassafras. And I think there's a little bit of cherry up there in front of the mill. Right there is the first stack to move to the kiln. That's mostly some walnut with some magnolia on the top. But before we take that down to the kiln, Need to move this cedar out of the way. I put it right there in the middle of the road.
so far we have eight quarter walnut on the bottom, then some four quarter butternut right there above it on those rows. And then on the top we have magnolia. And I'm also filled in this middle part with some short eight quarter walnut blocks left over from the last kiln drying. And we also got some help down here. Cabbage is supervising. Cabbage, don't let me forget you're back here, buddy. It's got a good stack going. That side right there is probably done. I'll come back here in the morning and do one more stack and we'll be ready to cut it on. Now let's head up to the sawmill and see what we got in front of the mill. I think I got some sassafras and some cherry, but I can't remember. All right, friends, I've tried this five times in a row to do my little intro on this log, and I've messed up every time. What's the offcuts at the end or offcuts? The outtakes at the end, I messed up again in real time. Looky there, and you guys will see them. So this is a sassafras, it's eight feet long. It's kind of a smaller log. We're looking at 13 inches on the diameter. It's on the operator's side, and down here you guys can't see, 12 inches. Somebody asked the other day, which ends should I saw into? And the other day on one of the Woodmiser groups, I saw Jake Dean answer that question. I'm gonna let Jake answer it because he answers it better than I can because he saws millions and millions of board feet a year. He says it doesn't matter. It depends on what he's making. He doesn't mind if it's the large end or the small end facing him on the operator's side. He doesn't really care. And I'm kind of the same way here. However the log falls on the mill is how I saw it. Unless it's a crotch log with the walnut crotch, I like the crotch to be facing me, that way I can make sure I get wide enough on my cuts with limited waist. But other than that, I really don't care. Now if I haven't already said it, this is sassafras on the sawmill. We're doing four quarter boards. And somebody asked me the other day if I could send them some sawdust because this stuff smells just like root beer when you saw into it. But here's what we'll do on that. I'm going to kiln dry this stuff. I got about a thousand feet of sassafras to run through the kiln here in a few weeks. And when they come out of the kiln, I'll sell the boards on my Etsy shop. So you guys that want to smell this stuff, you can get a few boards and build something with it and smell root beer year round in your house and just enjoy it. Cause I tell you what, it's hard to beat. I love this stuff when you saw into it and the smell of it. Now we're going to do some wide boards on this, probably 10 inches on the width, which is pretty good for sassafras. A lot of people see the sassafras that I get on the sawmill here and they call me at the third sassafras. How many times am I gonna say sassafras in this video? Probably about 20. They call me at the thirds is a lot smaller and they've never seen them this size before. Well, these are hard to find guys. I got these from the log yard over across the state line a few months ago and they don't come across this size very often, let me tell you. This was a good find. I got three more of these left to do, then I'll be stacking them up for air drying, then throw them in the kiln probably midsummer. Friends, what time is it? I gotta go. I gotta meet Bruno down at the tracker and do our nightly little ride around the farm. We'll come right back here in just a minute though and open this one up and cut it into boards real fast. Then I'll probably be done for the day. And a little plug here for my Patreon site, guys, and we'll get going here and I'll take Bruno on a ride and we'll get back up here and saw up his log. Anybody that wants to support me over there, I really appreciate it. There's a link down below, you can go check that out. If you join me on Patreon, you see these videos before they go on YouTube without any ads. I also talk on Patreon how much the log costs me. I also put behind the scenes information on there, such as equipment that I'm buying before it makes it to the channel and behind the scenes stuff. And you also have access to me for sawmill questions if you want to take advantage of that also. So anyways, guys, I want to thank everybody on Patreon for supporting me here. If you want to check that out, there's a link down below, and I really appreciate it. Let's go grab Bruno and get on the tracker and get back up here and open this one up. On the sawmill today, as usual, I'm running the Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. I get those from Joe down in Georgia. If you want those blades, give him a phone call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. He does not have a website. Somebody asked the other day. I don't think he even has an email address at his work. He, he works solely off of his cell phone, but he'll take care of you. Give him a call. He takes care of me every time. I'm never without blades here. Let's go find Bruno. All right, here he comes. He has to wear a mask outside because of his allergies. They're killing him this time of year. Hi, buddy. Hello. Ready to go?
Some walnut that's been sitting around like my stuff for several years. Years. It's several years. My goodness, I sound like a Tennessee. I'll tell you what. Years. As I just ate dinner, we're going to knock a... What we're going to do? I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to knock a what? Knock a what? That's another new word, guys. Knock a what?